All right, here's a, a video on uh, my ABL investigations. I have now built a little uh, bracket for my dial indicator. These are very expensive and they're very useful. And I'm gonna use it to highlight the differences that I'm suffering between what the ABL is measuring and what's actually is at the nozzle. So that as this um, carriage and extruder moves side to side, it, it rotates a little bit like that. And then what that does is it lifts this probe, which is a fair way from the back of the nozzle, higher, further away as it moves across one side or the other. So you don't get quite accurate ABL. I mean, it's good, it's not too bad, and my bed's not too warped. I'm, I'm only dealing with about 0.15 um, to 0.2 but of, uh, of drop. I've got a big low patch over here. But, you know, that's still almost a layer, and it doesn't even matter if it's a layer, even if it's like half a layer, that's enough that your, your, your lines, they won't actually squish properly and, and, and form, a, you know, a congruous congruent layer on, on the bottom but it's hard to tell with the S1 Pro here because you've got this big metal case sitting on top of the the cross members so I don't know if it's just the case that's uneven or the joint I have already taken this apart and put it back together just to check you know, make sure it wasn't under tension when I did it all up and that, and it didn't make any difference. So I'd possibly have to shim this up on this side. If I'm going to have to strip the whole thing down, take the case off, check if it is square or not, and then shim it up um, and go there. The other thing I might do is actually put some kind of heat-proof tape on top of the build surface uh, underneath. Uh, sorry, under the build surface on top of the magnetic plate. I did do that before with just aluminium foil, which worked, it's quite good and it's simple, but I want something that's not gonna just move around and, and, and fall off whenever I take the build plate off. Um, and I think that's that's really what you wanna look at doing eventually. Like, yeah, you got ABL and that's good and all, but it does only probe a certain amount of points and it simulates like where it thinks the curve goes. Ideally, if you've just got a flat surface to begin with, or as flat as possible, as I said, first step is I just did a normal 5x5. Five five. I'm running the Pro um, Mersoc Mers uh, firmware, which means I can actually do up to 9x9. Nine nine. Um, but I've just done a 5x5, five five, that's quick enough for now. Like I was saying, we go into uh, advanced uh, mesh leveling. Edit mesh, and as I said, the first time you come in here and select move to probing position, and then position zero, and now that'll do a home, and then we can swap the, the tool over. <coughs> Good idea to sit the head like up like that so that if for some reason does decide it needs to do a home on the Z, the probe won't be able to go down and it will detect that and um, bail out like uh, on the homing rather than try think that it can do it and never make it and crash into the bed. So that on the page. Okay, there we go. So now when we scroll down and select the Z value, it will lower the probe, there we go, now we're getting a reading. And we're starting at zero as the baseline in the middle. So what you do is you rotate your zero marker to line up with the needle. And now what you can do, if you want to probe a couple of times, just to check that it hasn't, isn't changing, you can select the Z value like that, just keep selecting it and it will just keep probing that position in case we're getting zero. Okay, so now let's go up and I'll sh show you what I'm talking about. So over here it's low, so let's go over here. So that's it's going to be like Y4, so up the back somewhere. 
and then x0 okay now the the, the result from the uh, the ABL probe was saying that that position is minus 0.14 lower than the, than the center zero point so let's see if that lines up with the gauge so we press mm -hmm. in like that okay now you can see that oh right, yeah you should be able to see so it's not on zero so it's actually reading anyway what you do is you, you turn my knob and then you'll see the, the dial gauge moving accordingly okay and basically you want to adjust it so, so that it's back on zero so now we're at minus 0.2 so that's it's further down so obviously it, it wasn't detecting that this was as low let's check uh, one point closer to me there we go and you can just work your way around like this correcting the readings so that one's off a bit too zero that was like what was that was like point one minus point one down to point one nine and once again if you just keep pressing enter on it it'll just keep probing that position so you can just check that the dial gauge is giving it a, a accurate result and then the last point that I wrote up front here is pretty close. Oh yeah, and also once you've done all your points, you've got to remember to save it. So you go back and then up uh, up to menu levels and then click store settings. Okay, and then that's now you've got your new mesh in there, which if I look at, you can see has the edited values that I have corrected so far. Um, oh, and another little tidbit, if you didn't notice or know, the little Z icon will change from white to blue when ABO is active, when you're printing. And you can see that by clicking on activate leveling. And then, yeah, see it's gone blue. If I turn it off, it goes back to white. The ch if you, it's easy just to put that in your start code, there's a, there's a G code that enables that but the, the kit because the problem is you have to do that after any homing like if you do a home position home position it actually disables that leveling so if i have the leveling on and then go back back and do it well, um well, i can't do a full home because i've got that on there but so maybe if i just do a home of the x There we go, so it's turned it off. So, you know, and a lot of the time there's, there's actually a homing move at, in the, you know, the Cura start code. So you just need to make sure that after that, with this firmware, that you have the uh, G code to select and activate, select the mesh and activate it.